Good morning, admin. We're going to be working from a My Perspective 7th grade lesson. This one is from Unit 1. Um, the unit theme is Generations. This is from the Whole Group section. We're going to start on page 28 with the word study. The standard that we're working with today is a 7th grade standard. It's to use common, grade-appropriate Greek or Latin affixes and roots as clues to the meaning of a word. This is the background. This is the stuff that would have been happening in the classroom before the lesson or things that are just good to know for the lesson. The students have just read Two Kinds, which is an excerpt of a short story by Amy Tan. In the text, nine-year-old Jing Mei faces pressure to be great from her immigrant mother. Mrs. Wu watches child geniuses perform feats that make them famous. She wants Jing Mei to become famous too. At first, Jing Mei shares her mother's hopes, but soon realizes she may never be the talented child of her mother's dreams. Our unit essential question is thematic. It is, what can one generation learn from another? Our mini lesson relates to the concept vocabulary, which is previewed before the text by the students and teacher. It's accessed in the text in context, and the word study part and the concept vocabulary activities after the text ask the student to expand their use of a new prefix and build more and more phylogical awareness. Working with word parts helps us to be culturally responsive, allowing non-native speakers a chance to build their vocabulary. The word parts in English often relate to word parts in their native language. Okay, let's get started with our activity. We're going to start with a little game first, but first let's review our I can statement. I can define words that contain the prefix in by understanding the new word that takes on the opposite meaning. Okay, so let's review our word part wall. Not a word wall. We've been collecting word parts, affixes and bases, as we've read them in our text and as we've encountered them in Savis, and we've been adding them to our word wall so that we can use these different word parts to create so many different words. So in a second, I'm gonna set the timer for one minute. I want you to work with the shoulder partner and see how many words you can come up with that use those affixes and bases. You don't have to combine the affixes and bases that are on the word wall. You can add other word parts to create new words. You're just trying to use as many of those as you can. Okay, pause the video for one minute and see how many of those you can come up with. That was fun, wasn't it? Does anyone want to share a word or two that they came up with? Go ahead and pause the video and share those words. That was fun. All right. Let's add another word part to our repertoire. Turn to page 28 with me. We're going to start down here at the bottom in the word study. I want you to take a minute and read that section silently. Okay. Now turn to your shoulder partner and summarize, or tell them briefly, what you read. Go ahead and pause the video and do that for me. Good, so I heard you telling each other that we have a new word part. It's in, it's a Latin, it's a prefix, and that when we add it to a word, it makes the word mean the opposite of whatever the base word was. Prefix, what's a prefix? Right, it's a word part that goes on the front of the word to change the meaning. Is this one Greek, Latin, Anglican? Right, it's Latin. We just mentioned that. So when we're taking a test, maybe a unit test, and it asks us to identify Greek and Latin words, is it really asking us to know the Greek and Latin language? No, it's asking us to identify these word parts. So don't let that freak you out if you see that on a test. OK, 
Can you think of any other words that use our new prefix? Yeah, there's lots of words that use it. Incorrect, inaccurate, inability, incomplete. So let's relate this new prefix to the text that we just read by Amy Tam. We just read two kinds and we worked with the concept vocabulary before we read and we read it while we were reading the text. So let's just look at a little snippet, a paragraph. Let's go to paragraph 9 on page 14. So good readers track, so grab your tracking finger or your pencil or your pen and follow along with me as I read this section. I want you to look for the word that starts with our new prefix. In fact, in the beginning, I was just as excited as my mother, maybe even more so. I pictured this prodigy part of me as many different images, trying each one on for size. I was a dainty ballerina girl standing by the curtains, waiting to hear the right music that would send me floating on my tiptoes. I was like the Christ child, lifted out of the straw manger, crying with holy indignity. I was Cinderella, stepping from her pumpkin carriage with sparkly cartoon music filling the air. So I'm sure you saw it because it's blue and it's bold. Indignity, right? That uses our new word part. Indignity. Okay, let's take that with us and look at number one on page 28 in the word study. Read that with me. When people have dignity, they're worthy of honor and respect. Worthy of honor and respect. So in a second I'm going to ask you to write a definition of the word indignity based on your knowledge of the prefix in. Before you do that let's look at number two so we can do both together. Number two asks to define these words that contain the prefix in. Incorrect, inactive, and incomplete. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and answer those two questions for me. All right, so we've answered those two questions. That's a great way for me to check in to see if you understand what this new prefix means. But I also want to get a feel of how comfortable you are using these, these new word parts. Kind of see where you're at in your head. So do this with me. We're going to do a one, two, three, four check-in. So right here on your chest, I want you to show me one, I've got it. I can use this new word part and change words. I'm super comfortable with it. Two, I understand how it changes a word, but I don't think I could use it. Three, I could recognize it if you asked me to, but I can't use it. And just for fun, four, am, am I in Maine still? What are we doing? Are we ready? One, I super have it. Four, I have no idea what's going on. Show me where you think you are. All right, admin, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for interacting with me through video. Have a great day.